Hey, what's up everybody? So with patch 12.5, Escape from Tarkov now has fancy new post effect settings that you can configure to change things in game like brightness, saturation, sharpening, and so on. Now I think it's a pretty well known fact at this point that you can get an edge in game by configuring these settings to help spot enemies. But for the most part, what I've been seeing is people just configuring them to something that feels right in the moment for the specific situation they're in and not necessarily all maps or they're setting it up for something that's aesthetically pleasing to them. And I wanted to take a deeper look to see if we could take some of the subject activity out of it and help find the best possible settings. Now, to be clear, different monitors are going to give different results, and I doubt I or anyone else could come up with the absolute perfect settings that will work for every monitor out there and suit everybody's tastes. But my hope is that by the end of this video, you'll know enough about these settings and where the pros and cons are for each environment that you'll be able to take one of the configurations I've set up for you and tweak it to suit you perfectly. My goal is to give you the settings that I think will maximize your ability to spot players and notice details and not necessarily be aesthetically pleasing. So if you feel like the game looks too cartoony, for instance, you're welcome to turn some things down, but you will be sacrificing some level of your potential edge to do so. Now, as always, I put a lot of effort into these videos and it took me a lot of trial and error to figure out this stuff, which is why I wasn't able to have this video out within a few hours of the patch going live. Hopefully you'll find the effort that I put into the video worthwhile. And if you do, I'd appreciate it if you give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If you're looking for people to play with, come join my Discord community. We've got over a thousand members and it's super easy to find a group to play with these days. Finally, come follow me on Twitch where I stream multiple times a week. Now with all that out of the way, let's jump in. So first things first, let's talk about performance hits. From what I can tell, everybody who rushed to get their videos out have reported there's no performance hit with these settings, but I can say with certainty that there is. In fact, under certain circumstances, I've had as much as a 30 FPS drop with these settings maxed out. It's a little weird though, as it seems like the higher your FPS, the bigger of a hit you're going to take. So if you're getting over 100 50 FPS, these settings are going to give you the biggest hit at around 30 FPS or so. If you're getting under 100 FPS, it's far less severe at around 5 to 10 FPS less at most. And if you're under 75, it's really negligible, somewhere between 0 to 2 at most. Now, it's no secret that Tarkov isn't the most optimized game right now, and you can be looking to the Great Horizon on some maps and get 200 FPS, and turn around and look at a darkened corner in a dank basement and tank all the way down to 60 FPS or lower. So if you struggle to get decent frame rates anyway, you might not notice any difference here. But if you do get pretty decent frames out of the game, should you still use these settings? That's up to you, but personally, I do think it's worthwhile. The clarity and sharpening settings alone will make spotting enemies so much easier that I think it's genuinely worth the FPS hit. But if you don't have any issues with that anyway, you might be better off without them. But if you don't have any issues with spotting players anyway, you might be better off without them so you don't take the FPS hit. Now, if you do struggle to get decent frames regardless, check out my graphic settings guide where a lot of people have reported me that they were averaging about 60 FPS or less and now are getting over 100 FPS after applying the advice that I put in my video. Also keep in mind that while GeForce filters are off limits as is reshade, there's still the NVIDIA control panel color settings, which won't give you sharpening, but you can mess with digital vibrance, contrast, and gamma settings and accomplish a lot of what you You'd get here, although maybe not to quite the same effect. My point is there's nothing you have to use about these settings, but I personally think they're well worth it. So obviously you can change the post effect settings purely for aesthetic purposes, and you really don't need my help with fiddling around until you find something that you think is aesthetically pleasing. But when I talk about giving you an edge, what I'm really talking about is increasing your ability to notice details easier, especially spotting players, but also spotting loot that might just be lying around the map. Ultimately, this comes down to creating the clear clearest contrast between objects, which is what all of these settings, when employed properly, will do. By default, all the colors in the game are pretty muted and the game is kind of blurry. So red Salewa sitting on top of a brown crate will just blend right in and you might easily miss it. But with proper post effect settings, you can increase the difference in colors between these two objects and add some sharpening, reducing the blurriness that might make the two objects blend somewhat together, making it much less likely that you'll miss it. And the same goes for players. And keep in mind that Players tend to wear camouflage that is designed to help them blend in. With proper settings, you can significantly aid your ability to spot them as well. Increasing this contrast is the ultimate goal here, as well as avoiding some of the downsides of improperly configuring these settings, which might actually cause you to lose visibility. Now, as I keep saying, if you don't like how it looks, feel free to tweak it to be more pleasing to your eye, but my goal isn't aesthetics, it's maximizing this contrast to help you see things and people better. Now, I don't plan to talk about colorblind 
offline mode here. I looked at it a bit, but didn't really feel like it bestowed any advantage unless you're, you know, colorblind. As for color grading, I went through all of these and there are some that give minor benefits here or there, but for the most part, it's all subtle benefits, usually at the expense of drastically changing how the game looks. And because all these settings play off of each other, some of these filters only give you a benefit if you configure the rest of the settings pretty specifically. So I don't really plan on going in depth on all of these. If you want to know what ones I think are the most interesting, it's Cognac, Edwards, Bread, Montreal, Jason Owl, Chillwave, Felicity, Stefano, and Boost. The only one that I think really deserves your consideration, no matter who you are, is Cognac. It turns everything an only slightly unpleasant shade of purple, but is by far the best filter for increasing clarity in low light situations, which is mostly inside of buildings. The higher you go with it, the better it works, but the more purple everything is going to become. So look at it, but keep that in mind. Now, before we talk about the main six settings, there's something we need to be clear about. There is no one setting that is perfect in every situation. In my experience, the best settings outside in daylight are drastically different from the best settings in doors in low light, and there's really no setting you can optimize for both daylight and night while using night vision goggles. I can give you optimized settings for every main environment I can think of, and some of you might just be crazy enough to change everything around every ray to give yourself the best possible edge, and that's cool if you're that dedicated. I sure as hell am not and so for the sane people out there, I plan to give you a configuration that you can use for all situations without ever having to change it. However, just be aware that while these settings are effective in all environments, they come with some pretty serious compromises and won't be maximizing your edge in all situations. They will give you a big edge over the default settings though. So the first setting is brightness and should be pretty self-explanatory. I know a lot of people are wondering if you can crank up this setting or any of them to let you see perfectly well at night without NVGs, but the answer is no. Darkness will remain dark, but brightness actually helps a lot with low light environments, which most indoor settings qualify as. Factory, labs, dorms, resort, warehouses, the mall, and so on. Cranking this up to the max can really help in these environments. However, it starts looking unnatural and washed out pretty quick. Also, light sources will become blinding, such as surfaces reflecting light like floors and walls, floodlights, and even the fucking sky. Worse, you know that lighting effect you get when you're inside a building and you look outside, how it looks even brighter out there? Brightness not just cranks this up even worse, but can drastically obscure your ability to see clearly. Look at this on reserve or even worse, this spot on interchange. You can't see halfway into the parking lot. It's crazy. In low light environments, you can crank this up pretty high and be okay. In daylight or around bright lights, I wouldn't kick it any higher than 10 and an argument can be made to leave it at zero. When wearing night vision, you want this as low as possible as you will lose lots of detail with it turned up. Same goes for fog as brightness will wash the fog out, making it impossible to see through. Saturation and colorfulness might be confusing to some of you, as at first glance they appear to do the same thing. I'm going to keep things practical and forego the long color theory explanation and just say that saturation is a little more subtle. It intensifies already bright colors, so muted colors like grays and browns and such won't be affected much, while blues and greens and yellows and reds will be significantly intensified. Turning this up can be good for color contrast, especially in outdoor environments, as green will get much brighter than browns, which can be great for spotting players and other things. Colorfulness, meanwhile, sort of brightens everything equally and rips color out of even the most muted of colors. If you crank colorfulness up to the max, you'll notice floors you assumed were gray actually have a lot of blue or green in them, and this setting will really bring that out. Now, while colorfulness kind of increases the color of everything, it's less subtle than saturation, but actually, colorfulness is better to crank up than saturation. The reason is because colorfulness will brighten everything equally, so no information is lost, really. Meanwhile, saturation might brighten the green grass so intensely that it becomes less easy to see the dull brown dirt behind it. This is especially true when wearing NVGs as saturation almost acts as a second brightness because it's brightening the color green essentially. Meanwhile, colorfulness you can crank all the way to the max and lose barely any detail at all, although in certain situations, especially while wearing NVGs, you will lose a little bit. Clarity is interesting as at first it gives the impression it's doing some kind of sharpening effect, but actually I think it's more like a specialized contrast setting that emphasizes the light a bit more 
than the shadows. So while things might get a little darker, it rarely gets so dark that it obscures detail. This is a very useful setting to help everything pop, and is probably the most useful setting for spotting enemies. It's not perfect though, and while it doesn't intensely affect dark colors, I have found that if you have an intricate detailed object, such as these walls on a shoreline or the bark of a tree, high clarity has a hard time with them and they get quite a bit darker. On this wall, for instance, it's actually a lot harder to spot the blood on it with clarity turned all the way up. Luma Sharpen is more subtle than Adaptive Sharpen and mostly seems to sharpen edges by lightening them up, where Adaptive Sharpen will lighten or darken edges as needed to make every edge stand out more. Luma Sharpen isn't as effective as Adaptive Sharpen, but you can crank it up a lot more without it looking bad, whereas Adaptive Sharpen starts to look like an artifacting mess the higher you go. Now, if indoors, you could probably safely maximize both of these settings and be just fine. But anywhere there's grass or trees, I actually think too much Adaptive Sharpen makes it harder to spot people because it's just information overload. Also, both of these settings can lead to a distracting amount of noise while wearing NVGs, although I'm not sure it's bad enough to adjust anything unless it really bothers you. Okay, so now that we know the pros and cons to each of these settings, let's get into my recommendations. And again, I'm not very focused on the aesthetics here. Everyone has different tastes, so if you don't like how something looks, then just adjust it to your liking. Just know that you might be sacrificing a bit of clarity to do so. You might also get slightly worse clarity than some other configurations based on your monitor settings, so keep all of that in mind too. My point is, you'll very likely need to tweak some of these settings on your own, but these should be a very good stepping off point for you. Don't comment if you needed to tweak some things. So. I'm going to break things down into several categories. Best indoor settings, best outdoor daytime settings, best night settings without NVGs, and best NVG settings. I'm also going to give you suggestions for how to adjust for fog. Then I'll be giving you my recommendations for best overall settings, which is a configuration that will work for all environments, but won't work as well as one that is specialized for that map or setting. So for indoors, I would recommend you go with 100 brightness, 30 saturation, 100 clarity, 70 colorfulness, and 50 Luma Sharpen and 70 Adaptive Sharpen with the color grading set to Cognac and turned up to 40. Turn up Cognac higher for slightly clearer details, but it will significantly increase the purple tint. So for outdoors in the daytime, go with zero brightness, 40 saturation, 70 clarity, 70 colorfulness, 50 Luma Sharpen and 50 Adaptive Sharpen. I'd leave color grading off, though you can turn on Cognac to 40 if you want. For nighttime without NVGs, go with 100 brightness, zero saturation, 100 clarity, Colorfulness doesn't really matter, so just set it wherever you want. 100 Luma Sharpen and 100 Adaptive Sharpen. Turn color grading to Cognac and turn it up to 60 or higher if you can tolerate it. When using night vision, do zero brightness, negative 60 saturation, 100 clarity, 60 colorfulness, 50 Luma Sharpen, 50 Adaptive Sharpen, and turn color grading off. Now for fog, it really depends on your environment, so I would start with one of the above settings and then turn brightness, saturation, and colorfulness down a bit, especially at sunrise and sunset when outdoors, as it will add a severe red glow to the environment that can make it really hard to see through. Turn clarity and luma sharpen up and put adaptive sharpen at around 50 to 60. Okay, so those are the no compromise solutions, but for those of you out there who are like me, don't wanna deal with that shit every raid, here's the settings I'm personally going to go with and never adjust. brightness. 10, which isn't ideal for dim environments, but won't break night vision or cause the whole sky to go into angry god mode. Saturation 10, clarity 70, colorfulness 70, luma sharpen 50, adaptive sharpen 50, and color grading turned off or set to cognac at 20. Now, if you don't want to change your settings often, but you are willing to do so just for night vision runs, then you can actually change your settings to be quite a bit better for you. I would use my night vision configuration that I already mentioned when you do NVG raids, but for your normal configuration, I do the following. Brightness set to 20, saturation 30, Clarity 70, Colorfulness 70, 50 Luma Sharpen, and 50 Adaptive Sharpen, and set color grading to Cognac at 40. Personally, I'll probably stick with just the Jack of All Trades Master of None configuration, because not only do I not want to have to worry about fiddling with settings all the time, but there's also plenty of situations you can run into. Like, what if you're on shoreline and you go to resort? Do you set your game up for outdoor or indoor settings? What if your raid starts just before it gets dark and is dark by the end of the raid? What if you find some night vision goggles or a thermal in the middle of a raid? It just puts too many very variables into it, and it just seems like a lot of hassle to me personally. That said, by doing the jack of all trades settings, I'm definitely not optimizing it as much as I could. Hopefully this guide helped you all out. If it did, leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel, join my Discord server, and come follow me on Twitch. If you have any suggestions for your own configurations, leave me a comment down below. We'll see you guys next time.